What's up everybody? So I just found an interview on the Wisconsin Law Journal YouTube channel. Make sure to go give them a sub. I will have them linked in the description below and I will link the video directly in the description below as well so you can go have a view for yourself. But they have an interview from April 2023 with Ken Kratz. I haven't seen a lot of new things with Ken Kratz at all. I totally missed this interview when it came out. I have not seen seen anybody online talking about it or mentioning it at all. Maybe I just missed it. But judging by the amount of views these two videos have, which isn't a lot, one of them has a thousand, the other one has 962, the channel itself only has six subscribers. Let's change that. Go subscribe to their channel. Go watch these videos. Bump up their views. So not a ton of people have seen these interviews with Ken Kratz. They're not overly long, but they are very interesting. And like I said, the one I'm talking about right now now is linked in the description below so go click it and you can hear it directly in Ken Kratz's own words I'm gonna do a little review here of what they talk about in the interview the person at the person doing the interview asks who killed Teresa Halbach he responds with Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey the interviewer asks if they didn't do it who would be your best suspect Ken Kratz says nobody I uh, the interviewer asks did law enforcement plant evidence Ken Kratz says, not in this case. The interviewer asks, if you were Stephen Avery's lawyer, what would you have done differently? He states he would have filed different motions, states he's been asked this question before, and Ken Kratz says he would have lost. Then they ask why there are no fingerprints of Stephen Avery's on the RAV4. Now, he says something, I think I know what he means, but it sounds a little weird to me. He says that fingerprints aren't an exact thing, and he says you wouldn't find fingerprints prevalent in a place that has a lot of fingerprints. Initially, when I watched it, it sounded like he was saying you wouldn't find fingerprints in a place that had a lot of fingerprints, but what I think he means is you wouldn't find, it would be hard to find one specific fingerprint in a place that has a lot of fingerprints, but you would think they would still be able to find a match, a partial match, or anything if there was if Stephen Avery was the last person allegedly without gloves to touch this vehicle you think they would be able to find at least one fingerprint one partial print anything but they found none and he couldn't have been wearing gloves because his blood's all over the place right just bizarre uh, that was the strangest part of the interview for me the interviewer asks, why was there no blood on the key, the gear shift of the RAV4, the driver door handle, the rear passenger door handle, or the steering wheel? He says it happened later in time after Stephen Avery allegedly parked the RAV4. He doesn't say allegedly, I said allegedly. He thinks Stephen Avery reached through the passenger door to do all of the things he did in the RAV4. Then the interviewer asks, why did the prosecution say the RAV4 couldn't be driven onto the Avery lot even though there are four entry points to the Avery lot from where it was allegedly driven onto? Ken Kratz states, the suggestion that the RAV4 was dumped can't be true. There were attempts made to hide the RAV4. You wouldn't try to hide a vehicle if you wanted it to be found. He's saying that because there were sticks and twigs over the RAV4 that whoever put it there was trying to hide it so it wouldn't be found. I would assume if you want this vehicle hidden, you would have done a much better job at hiding it than what was done. Or, you know, use the car crusher that was on the lot and get rid of it altogether. But even, even if you didn't use the car crusher, you would have hit it way better than it was hid with sticks and twigs. And you could have spotted that thing anywhere if you were walking up and down the lot looking for it. It was not hidden well. He also states the idea of the bullet being planted in the garage is also wrong. And the, and the interview actually cuts off before it seems like it was done. I don't know why it was cut off. They never uploaded a second part to this interview. There is another interview up probably filmed right after this one talking about convicting a murderer and I'm going to go over that one as well in the next video. But go to the Wisconsin Law Journal YouTube channel, give them a sub, bump up their subs, watch the video. You can hear it directly from Ken Kratz yourself. Come back, let me know what you think. I hope you're having a good day and I will see you again soon.